Hello, YouTube. Hi, YouTube. It's hate week. Like, not really. Not yet. Like and subscribe. We are going through our Timbies. September our, Awards. The, the best players, the best games, what we were wrong about. Yeah, we're eating crow. And we're crowing. It's unnecessary roughness. Like and subscribe, and I'm not going to let him talk, I promise No, go you. ahead and talk, Jack. Comment your favorite moment from this past uh, month of the Tembi. Oh, yeah. Good idea. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling terrible. Yeah. Um, I wonder what um, what you've given us. I haven't given y'all anything. You're the only one that's got No, I was say. a little sick last week, but I didn't want to tell anybody because I didn't want to freak out Casey before the show. I was sick on Friday. Mm -hmm. But it was a quick... I wasn't here, though, Friday. I've been sick. Was I? I've been sick for eight days. Yeah, but no. I didn't want to text you and be like, "Oh, I'm sick too," and then you'll you'd I might be, be like, dying. "Oh my god!" You guys are talking, but I could. This could. No, be I will tell you. I so, I never no flights never bother me. Like my ears don't pop. Like usually when I was a kid, that flight back was so bad. It was the worst flight <laughs> I've been on in a long time. And I know people are like, "Oh, like get over it. You're on a private plane." No, no, you don't understand. And maybe you do. You know when your ears yeah are rebelling against you in every which way and there's you can chew gum right you can swallow ice or whatever all those things nothing it was and i didn't want to make a big deal about not feeling well because dan was already yeah. like woke on the fact that we were all sick i have not i've not felt worse than i have in that moment in a long time low key ears got to be like top five worst body parts to hurt i like if my I knee hurts i'm, I'm fine if my ankle hurts i'm fine I don't want anything wrong with my eyes, my ears. It spreads. It's all connected. Yeah, like yeah, but if your if your ears are like messed up or like a bad toothache is bad too, but uh, yeah. if your if your ears are like hurting to the point you're noticing it, it just ruins your. You can't have a normal day. No, you can't. Well, and also you can't hear for shit. But then all the uh oh, <coughs> oh, 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 all the uh, the remedies are on the ground. There's nothing you can do with your ears. I was when my ear popped on the plane. I couldn't hear you. I was like so happy. I wasn't mm. even talking to you. There was no one speaking on that plane. Shut up. It was really quiet. It was really? so. It was so I quiet. Fell I fell asleep. We all felt <laughs> so shitty. Yeah, you and were snoring. <laughs> and Some you had the adrenaline dump. Some yeah. Yeah. Like you guys had all too. the adrenaline, yeah. and then the dump after. That's Tennessee a real thing. Tennessee was so pleasant. Tennessee was great. Yeah. I've I've looked back at like the footage, and you know I always do like the little like behind the scenes TikToky thing or whatever. I was smiling when I was putting yeah. it together because it was just such a lovely place. It's just such a departure from those pieces of shit at Iowa. Boy, what a just an absolute 180 from week two on the road to, to week four. Really, truly, the South. At the South. Better. And then and we're going to follow well, it up by going to Piscataway, New Jersey. I'm kind of excited about it. All right. <laughs> yeah, it is. Whatever. We're going to Rutgers, Nebraska. Uh-huh. Because somebody's got to be there. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I'll be Somebody okay. does have to Somebody go Somebody does to have game. to be there. What I'm interested to see, because the only time I've ever been to Rutgers is when we did, like, a thing for Barstool Bites a while ago. Yeah. And it was it was a game day. Well, but they screwed. The person who set that up yeah, screwed it, you guys over. Exactly. So it was not the best situation. But I've heard that when Rutgers wants to party – yeah. They party, and it's a Friday night, so it's like, what else is there to well, do? Well, nothing screams a party like a 43-year-old dude from the South and a pregnant broad. We're partying now. Well, you did take a shot on the show. I didn't want to. I was so excited. When I saw that coming, I was like, oh, this is going to be great. Yeah, and you can't tell Dan now. And then Dave made fun of me. I don't drink. I certainly don't take shots. When I do drink, I drink a little wine, a little beer. And high noon. high noon. And high noon hard seltzer. But you know what? That's in the podcast. We'll get started now. Hello, and welcome to... I almost said hello and welcome to High Noon Hard Seltzer presented by Unnecessary Roughness. How much cold medicine have you taken today? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the High Noon here. It's Unnecessary Roughness, Barstool's college football podcast. I am doped up as I can be. Casey Smith can't be as doped up as me, but she's quite sick too. We're having fun. We are having fun. I will say that not being able to take cold medicine is good for the podcast because I'm not loopy. Yeah. But it is very fun to watch somebody else on cold medicine be loopy. It is what it is. But yeah, I'll tell you what, what's better than taking cold medicine when you have a cold is taking high noon when you don't have anything. High noon is fantastic. It's the best drink in the world. Uh, you got cranberry and the pear and the tailgate pack. 
you know, a couple of years ago when we would go on the road and we would see a high noon, it was thrilling. And now you can't go on the road without seeing high noon. It is everywhere. Everybody's enjoying it. And that's just how good the drink is and how awesome the company is. Amen, brother. All right. Super duper. We've got week five yeah. of yep. college football. October. October football is upon us. I mean, it felt like fall this morning. There's still some Thursday. There's still some September games. When is October officially? Friday? Saturday. Saturday. Oh, October, October 1st. 1st. Yeah. It's going to be one of those oh, yeah. Octobers where you have five Saturdays. Yeah. Right? One, uh, yeah. eight, o- 15, 22, 29. We're going to have Love as that. much October football as you can possibly have this year. And October, probably the best month for college football. September, everybody's easing in. Everybody's playing some FCS teams, some non-competitive mm. teams. By October, we're throwing all the conferences together, and, and we're – figuring it out and by november that you have the rivalry games for sure and you have yeah. big matchups but you have some but teams checked out yeah you already know kind of what what the the watch for the college football playoff is going to kind of and shape it's up to colder look like. outside and it's See, grayer I love that, though i love that you do i, I october is the perfect weather october yeah. is good you know six, in the south it's going to be it's going to be 68 degrees and oh, october. sunny at kickoff and then when it when it when it when the game ends it's like 57 and and dark I will say that not only is October the best month for college football, I think it's the best sports month of the year. Well, I think there's a big argument that October is the best month of the year, period. I, I, I feel would like agree. Wow. You have terrific sports. You have football raging. You have baseball in its uh, championship form. You have uh, – The NBA starting at the very end of it. Yeah, you have other sports starting to get ready. The winter sports are getting ready. Also – you have Halloween. You have you have also, you have broads out there dressing like whores for Halloween. They do do that also. Your birthday. Yes, thank you. Best sports. So I'll cover that in the other topic. Yeah. More than March. Yeah, because college football and the NFL. We're you got more sports going. March is awesome. March is great. But you got you got more sports going. Yeah, you have like only March. One. You haven't. You, Major League Baseball hasn't tipped off or kicked off yet. You've got uh, you've got the NCAA tournament, but you don't have any football. And it can't be the best sports month if there's no football in your month. And Very you true. have you have the like the good spring sports going. Like it's like in April, the Masters happens. Obviously, the Final Four. But if you're if you love football and you don't have football going, you can't you can't say it's the best. But Tell it is what, a good one. When we fire up this college football playoff soon, December and January are going to get real interesting because. Just saying. Whenever, just hi, side note, Jack, you might know this because I feel like you know everything. Have they? Why do you think that? I Jack? knew Brandon wasn't going to like that one. Okay. Well, because Jack always has his finger on the pulse of everything social media, so I feel like he's probably seen this if it's existed. Have they done what a hypothetical schedule would look like for the twelve team well, playoffs? Oh, yes. I got one. This past week, they I, they there was rumors that the bowl games are petitioning so the games that would happen on a, a, on campus would not happen on campus and at actual bowl games. Well, that's bullshit. That would be fine, but that's – I know what you got there, Katie, but I what mean she was dates. asking was yeah, like, like dates. Dates. Oh, oh, oh. dates. I yeah, I would yeah. assume – so December 3rd, usually around SEC championship. Yeah. I think the first round games would happen – uh, around like the 14th, like so, not the Army Navy Saturday. Yeah. That was first Saturday of bowl one. games. So you'll have you would have the Idaho Potato Bowl, and then you would have uh, the first round of the playoff. First round of the playoff, wherever Imagine. it is. So they wouldn't move. So because my, my thought was they can't fuck around with the NFL playoff, so they wouldn't move it further in January. No, 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 it would just no, be a more stacked would. December. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. You wouldn't have any 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 downtime, any down period of college football. Because when bowl games start, you know everybody's like, okay, yeah, like we can gamble on them. It's still football on my TV, but boy. Also, December's there for the taking. It and is. December's wide open. December's there for the taking. Think if they if they took over December, how excited. People get, and if you love the NBA, it makes sense. But how excited people get whenever, like, the Christmas Day schedule comes out, yeah. and it's like, oh my god! It, and that's great, but it is because NFL's checking out by that time. We know who's going to be in the playoff, except for maybe a few teams. Boy, if you can own mid-December, yeah, with the playoff, yeah, boy, yeah, I, we should be on the playoff committee. I am. Are you not? Well, you're not, but we should be. I I have a Heisman vote too. That's awesome. That is awesome. Congratulations. Your hair looks nice. Why don't I have a Heisman vote? I'm more qualified than most Can of these we, like, put in, like, an application? Full- no, nah, you have to be an uh, American Football Writers Association. I, don't know, I was a sports writer for 20 years. Yeah, but did you ever belong to that? No, because it, it cost $100. I didn't want to give it. 
to them. Could yes. we? So could we join that as an unnecessary roughness uh, riders guild and maybe get a vote? I've never been in a guild. You want to be in a guild? Been, what is a I've guild? Been, is a harp, I've been in a it's harp. A union. A harp guild. Oh, yeah. I forgot you, you played the harp. I forgot you played That's the harp. That's my favorite yeah. thing about you, that you play the harp. Yeah. Like not a real angel. instrument, just a harp. Well, a real instrument. I mean, the inside of a grand piano is a harp. That is true. It is. It's so it makes me very angelic. Casey Smith. Brandon Walker. One thing you got to do. You mm. got to do it in life, in sports, and everything. You got to stay hydrated. You do have to drink water. And luckily, we here at Barstool have a relationship with the people that hydrate you the best. It is body armor, sports drink, but they're more than a sports drink. They are. There's so much more. They've got everything that your body needs. But here's the thing. I say this all the time. Did you see the shipment of body armor that we got in the kitchen today? I did not. Massive. Massive shipment. And boy, it's like Christmas morning when that happens. Oh, people get Everybody excited. flocks yeah. to it because body armor is A, delicious. Yep. B, you have to have water to live. And C, if you have the sports drink, it has all the good stuff without all the bad stuff. It has potassium-packed electrolytes, antioxidants. B vitamins, no artificial sweeteners, flavors, or dyes, meaning it has all the good stuff, doesn't have the bad stuff, and it tastes very good. It is the choice for hardworking hydration, and you know your favorite players are hydrating with Body Armor Sports Drink on and off the field. You can get it on Amazon. That's key. It's available for purchase in stores across this country, or if you don't want to go to the store, it's on Amazon right now. You can just sit on your couch or lay in your bed and have Amazon bring you water straight to your door stay hydrated with body armor i know i already told you this but i i wanted to say it again uh you your mom has officially taken your dog from you well, that's not true well she told me to tell you that so. uh, well she that's not true she's been babysitting my dog uh as i moved into my new house i'm going to get my dog soon she said tell him his dog is no longer his it's mine i'm going to get my dog she wanted me to tell him that in person it's a good dog it is. Sam's a great dog. I'm Brandon Walker, all right? Jen, nobody steal my dog. Are you texting your mom right now? No, I'm FaceTiming her. Oh, no. Tell me. She's going to say. I do the opposite. She's she going to say. Brandon is three inches away from his phone screen. It's very cute. Cross-eyed. I see she ain't answering. She's scared. Uh-huh. That's right. Oh. Oh. Hey, Mama. Uh, I'm getting my dog back. No, I'm I, getting my dog I back. I told him what you said. Mama, that's my dog. That's my dog. The dog, the dog doesn't like you anymore, Brian. Well, the dog hasn't seen me in a month. I'm coming to get my dog. Well, that's why he don't like you anymore. You don't know that. You haven't talked to him about it. Oh, I, I, I have talked to him about it. He told me last night. I love it here. You know, I'm, I'm the one that said that you were going to We go to the creek every day. We walk. We run. We have fun. That's fine. I'll get you another dog. That's my dog. All right, goodbye. Goodbye. I'm getting my dog back. No, you're not. College football. College football. Is happening this week. I saw – I didn't realize this. There are five ranked matchups. Yeah. Do you realize there hasn't been a weekend with five <laughs> ranked matchups in five years? We're, we're, that's wow. That's shocking. Since 2017, this is the first time we've had Even five. Is it regular season or including? No, of course. Yeah, regular season. Really? Yeah, yeah bowls wouldn't count. Uh, that's yeah, crazy. That we haven't had five ranked on ranked games since uh, 2017. Jeez. And there that's are, there are games that are not ranked on ranked that are good. Like our game is good this weekend. We're not ranked. Oklahoma mm -hmm. TCU is good. And yeah. TCU is not ranked. Sure, correct. Which is ridiculous. Which, Jack, I, so I was writing down the games for the college football show, and I thought of you specifically whenever I was like, we need to put Oklahoma TCU in this, because even though it's not a ranked on ranked game, it's a good game. TCU is our is some people's if you're Jack, a TCU favorite fan, to win though, the to win the Big Twelve. If you're a TCU fan though, you got to be a little nervous that Oklahoma just lost. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm with you. Yeah, like, like you would much rather them come in there undefeated than than having just lost to another purple team. They're not going to lose to two purple teams in a row. Which and one's better? What purple's better? I think TCU. I think TCU's Did you see probably that better video purple. of the guy saying Lincoln Riley ain't here no more to quit. Yeah, mm. right before the Kansas State yes. Oklahoma game, it's yeah. so perfect. That's Oklahoma Twitter personified. Yes, it's it is so accurate. And the also, why this is exactly what we said would happen. Why are they still caring about what Lincoln Riley is doing or wasn't doing four weeks into the season? Well, 
Well, it's easy to blame the old coach when you're when you lose in the first year of a new coach. That's the everybody does. But this that. was before they lost. Like when Florida lost, that it was yeah. Dan Mullen's fault. But no, but this, this was, was before, before they, they lost. lost. This was before the game. Instead of like he was ta- he was talking trash to Kansas State, saying, "Hey, you know, Lincoln's not here anymore." Right. I mean, Lincoln is Lincoln is knee deep in their head. That's that's not anything new. Yeah, yep. he's, and he's not getting out of there anytime soon. No, I promise you, if they if they finish t- uh, nine and three this year, and rank number. 11 Oklahoma yeah if Oklahoma finished not, uh, number 11 they would be okay as long as USC was 12 that would be a, a terrific oh, year a for them. they don't even care about Oklahoma State anymore yeah no definitely not it's all about what's happening in LA all right so we've got college football this weekend it's going to be a big weekend we're going to do our full preview next time but let's look back at September because September is pretty much over for the month for college football we have a couple of games Thursday and Friday actually a decent little game, slate Friday I think um, isn't Washington UCLA Friday night? Yes. Yep. Uh, which is a terrific game. Yes. Um, so that'll be our last game of September, actually. But we're going to do our September awards today. The team of the month, the best player so far in whatever, you know, four games, the best game, the best moment, the most disappointing team. And we're going to take time to pat ourselves on the back. And also tell ourselves where we suck. And tell ourselves where we suck. But let's go through the news very quickly. Uh, we uh, the AP top twenty five hasn't really changed all that much. Uh, the one thing I noticed is uh, Georgia, their little their mid game against Kent State they weren't great. They they won by seventeen, but they lost four first place votes. They lost one to Alabama and three to Ohio State. So Alabama and Ohio State both getting four first place votes. Georgia getting fifty five. I got to be honest. Georgia was impressive the first three weeks. Really impressive. I thought that game against uh, Kent State would have cost them a little bit more votes. I Maybe don't, not all the votes, but a little bit more. I think that the the sleepwalking element of it, and I know that's like a cliche thing to say, but I do think that if you look at that game, and they still won, yeah. it's just like I, I, if I was a voter, I would still put them at number one. I wouldn't have seen enough from Ohio State to jump them. Well, I think I would have voted Georgia number one too, but all three at the top – Georgia, Alabama, Ohio State, all three have been dominant outside of one game. Ohio State's non-dominant game was against Notre Dame. Alabama's non-dominant game was a one-point win over Texas. And Georgia's non-dominant game was a 17-point win over a Mac school. Like, I, I just feel like... How would you power rate these teams just as they are in the AP poll, one through three? Georgia, like- Alabama, Ohio State... Yeah, let's just say you are setting lines. I gotta be honest I, for I, those three, I, those games. I feel like they're just. I feel like they're a group. I feel like they're all the same team. Mm-hmm. Like, like they're just. I would start ranking the top twenty-five like after them because they. I would set them aside. I don't know within that group. So you think it's just within that group? I would still go one Georgia. I would mm-hmm. probably go two Ohio State, three Bama. Okay, I'm a little bit higher on Bama than you, but not like these are little margins where yeah. right. if we were power rating them, you had a, a rating of. 62 mine was 60 in terms of like overall and then georgia 63 in fairness to ohio state i think alabama had a bad game at texas i feel like notre uh, ohio state had a bad half against notre dame they were they were down they dominated the second half they didn't score a whole lot of points but they they were down a half and then ended up winning by double digits so my thing with it is that yeah georgia was was quote mid or however you just described it last week but georgia has never even been close to in danger of losing a game Alabama clearly was. They almost lost to Texas. Right. And then Ohio State wasn't by the end but of the Notre Dame balance, game. But how do you balance Georgia beating Kent State by 17 with Alabama playing on the road to Texas? Like, I do mean, you, Texas do, just do, lost, but too. But do, 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 do you think in your mind, like, if, if Georgia, the way they played against Kent State, if that were on the road to Texas, what would that have looked like? Do you even do you go that deep? But then, how do you balance how Georgia played against Oregon? Mm-hmm. Now that's that's with Oregon and Texas played. I think they're pretty similar teams. That's the big separator right now because Oregon. Oregon has Oregon is number thirteen in the country. They're a good like, team. They're they're a good team. They've bounced back. Uh, they got a road win at Washington State. They've beaten BYU at home. Oregon's fine. Bo Nix is doing some things up there, and Georgia just eviscerated them. That's so the main. That's difference. the big separator in in this whole thing. And Ohio State clearly got everything right, you know, over the last few weeks. That Notre Dame win, and I know it was Week One, and I know the second half they dominated. That still now looks a little bit fishier, not bad, but a little bit fishier than we thought it would because of how bad Notre Dame has been. Okay, so question: As we go forward in the season, let's say they all three go undefeated, just just for in the regular season. Yep. Does does one, two, and three ever change? Like, 
Alabama's got a trip to Arkansas coming up. Uh, Ohio State's got Penn State coming up. They got Michigan. Well, Michigan's at the end of the season. Georgia doesn't really have as much playing in the SEC East. So, so will will this? They got Kentucky, but I don't think Kentucky's going to be top ten by the time Georgia plays. So let's just say Bama runs through Arkansas, right? Runs through Tennessee. Georgia only beats Tennessee by seven to yeah. ten. Then you could see Bama taking that a step forward. Ohio State, I think, is probably going to be in that three range for a while, but. If they destroy the likes of Michigan and right. Penn State and then win the Big Ten handedly, you could see them at one. I don't think it would really matter because, like, they're not going to put – it's going to be interesting because the age-old question will come up. If the SEC championships Georgia-Bama and then whoever loses, do you put them down all the way to four to have them have a rematch no. right away? Probably not. So, Well, now, now wait, wait, wait. Just, just looking at what I see right now. I think there's a chance Clemson gets through their schedule undefeated. They're five. I think USC could get through their schedule undefeated. So there might be a world where there's a no safety up. net for the there's no safety net for the SEC runner up. We play this game every year though, and it all and, and losses it always, always happen. It always works out. The yeah. way I see Ohio State not always, State, but it comes close to the way I see Ohio State jumping is depending on what happens with Michigan and Penn State as we go through the season. Because, you know, you mentioned Georgia. Now, if Georgia's just killing every single team in the SEC East, fine. But if they're winning close games, but Michigan stays undefeated until they play Ohio State, Penn State pl is undefeated until they play Ohio State, those wins will push Ohio State higher eventually. I don't know if they jump Georgia right away, That's but at the end of the season, you look at it and you say, okay, if they're, I mean, right now, Michigan at number four, Penn State at 11, I think Penn State should be in the top 10. Those wins right there are going to be more impressive than Alabama beating Arkansas or A&M or Tennessee or whoever it may be. It's all rankings and they don't matter right now. I just want to point out that I think Michigan at four right now is absurd. It's, it's absurd. Where would you put them? I, behind Clemson, behind USC. Those are teams that have at least played decent competition. Clemson has a road win at a ranked team. USC uh, has played decent competition. Um, Michigan has played three of the worst non-conference opponents you can possibly play and then a seven-point win over Maryland. Like, I, I just don't see – there's certainly not a number four resume behind them right now. I would agree with that. I don't think they should drop any further than sixth. But I do think that the you know we I mentioned sleepwalking. It felt like a lot of teams had that moment throughout this throughout the weekend. I w Michigan and I know they're playing Iowa and Iowa. That's is my just, biggest eyeballs game of the week. You better be paying attention. That's where that that will be. That will that's, tell me exactly where I think that's they should danger be ranked. time for Michigan because Michigan could have easily and I you know again cliche but slept walk through Maryland. Talia played really well. You know, you've been high on Maryland. Maryland is not a bad football team. If they recreate that type of game and obviously probably be much lower scoring because Iowa doesn't know how to score touchdowns, then then you start saying, okay, they're not the fourth team in the country. If they handle Iowa completely fine, they, they'll beat Indiana. That, to me, you know, then going into number 11 Penn State in the middle of October, they deserve to be number four. I just feel like on Saturday I got this weird feeling that you're going to look up at 1.30 in the afternoon and Michigan's going to be trailing Iowa 10-3. to 3, And you're going to wonder, what in the hell is going on? Um, you it's, know, maybe I'm way wrong. Maybe, they, maybe they're maybe they up 21 nothing at the end of the first quarter. But, whew, man, that's a, that is a scary place to go at any point. 42. That makes so sense. So they're expecting it to be gross. Well, it's Iowa. All right. Iowa's so just gross. Let's move on to uh, the other news. Um, Jeff Collins is out again. I don't know if it's a transfer portal or if it's whatever. It seems like it was rare to have a coach fired in September. This is now three. And if Brian Harson had lost to Missouri, it would be four right now. It'll be four whenever he gets fired. But it's it's three, right? It's Arizona State, Nebraska, and now Georgia Tech. Mm -hmm. Georgia I mean, Tech is the, – the, people don't list them with the Tennessees and the Nebraskas of the world, but they're depressing too. Georgia Tech used to be something. Yeah, but they, they're depressing for people who – really pay attention to college football like there was nobody I, I don't feel like the the casual fan of college football is like damn it would maybe be so not, much better if georgia tech was good maybe not but they're in atlanta they won a national That's, title in the 90s like, that, like yeah. this is not crazy and, and and hell even into the 2000s they had memorable players they had calvin johnson they had demarius yeah. thomas oh, they, they definitely had joe memorable. hamilton like this is this they're just is, not a, a i know that it's I, a much prouder 
I think I think the the triple option time did them in in the eyes of a lot of people. Mm. Like I, it was just I, a boring. They became a gimmicky team. Yep. They became a gimmicky team. They became uh, a team that was just like a uh, unique and a, like a carnival act. And then Collins was not the coach to succeed. Collins gets there and promises all this stuff and doesn't deliver anything. So now they're just they're they're just they're in the in the wilderness. They have no identity, no brand, and they're by the way their main rival, which wouldn't piss on them if they were on fire, is winning the national title. We've said this before. Well, we know how to revive Georgia Tech. They should hire us to well, make this decision. Well, hold on. I think Mr. Sanders is going to have calls other than Georgia Tech. I believe so as well. I think Auburn's won. Auburn's probably going to make a play for Hugh Freeze, but I don't know if they can but, hire him. But. but all the reasons we talked about, whatever episode that was, whatever week that was, Atlanta, his ties to Atlanta, how easy it would be for him to recruit there. You know another the transfer name. portal. You know another name for Auburn, don't you? Yeah. Who's, who's I gonna, do. Who's going to try to get that job? Yeah, I do. Who? Lane Kiffin? Yeah. I don't, he would when suck was the last, 30 dicks to go to Auburn. When was the last time we had a conference-to-conference conference head coaching change? Uh, it could be dumb. I don't know, but what, 20 years ago, we had an Ole Miss coach go to Auburn. Like I mean, Tommy Tupperville did that. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't direct, but saving one from LSU to Bama. Um, yeah. uh, we saw Norvell go from uh, Nevada to – not Norvell. Yeah, What's oh, his he, name? I mean, uh, the, to Colorado State. This off season, but that that's Mountain West. I'm trying to think of the last uh, in conference. SMU TCU, but that's yeah, that's just a rivalry, not a conference. <sighs> yeah, no, I can't. I don't think there's been and that because no, there's there's one that's obvious and I like, can't. Would you think be what it is. accepted? I mean, in crystal ball went from Pac-12 to ACC. I mean, mm-hmm. Will Muschamp went Florida to South Carolina, yeah, but, that, but that's yeah, because he, he got fired. He got fired. Yeah, he got fired. He didn't, so, leave, he didn't choose to leave. No, I don't. Uh, someone's like screaming at their. It's definitely, someone's screaming yeah. at it. And I mean, they're right. They should be screaming from. Anyway, I, I, from a major, a major like a power five conference, like in the same conference, it definitely hasn't happened recently. So, question: We now have Georgia Tech. We'll have Auburn soon. I think that's uh, predetermined. We know that. So Auburn plays LSU this weekend. Yep. And so then that's fine. Hold on. Does okay. does Northwestern fire Fitzgerald? Well, that's what I was asking you on Saturday night. It does feel like he's kind of. And then another guy, the Northwestern of the West has a very similar situation too. Colorado? Stanford. Stanford. Oh. Because what happens there with Shaw? Because you had a uh, a Stanford team that looked like they were going to be a li- pretty good this year. Like nothing mm-hmm. spectacular, but they looked like they maybe they could uh, make some noise in the Pac-12, and they've been blown out by both USC and uh, Washington over the weekend. So David Shaw is certainly another one who is like, wait a second. He does and, have a decent recruiting one more, class one, one more. Uh, things are going well for him now. He's won two games in a row. But does would an eight and four record put Jimbo in danger? No, he was recruiting. Would an eight and four record with half the class transferring put yes. him in danger? Yes. If a lot of people start transferring, then it's like, wait a second, what's going on here? Yeah. Uh, yes. They if it was it's eight and if they go eight and four, would seven and five put him in danger? Yes. This game, if you guys blow him out, then there's a serious discussion. I mean, because it, 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 you know we play you guys this weekend, mm-hmm. hate week, right? I think that'll ramp up on Thursday. Then you have Alabama. Then Alabama. Right. That could be – the wheels could come off pretty quickly. You already have a loss, so, so at that point you'd be 3-3. Three and three. If, if the- uh, I've, I've said this, you know, when you pay somebody that much money, you have high expectations right off the bat. You pay somebody that's proven that he can win somewhere Schedule else. Schedule not that hard after Alabama. No, though, it's not. But if they're 3-3 three and three, – and then you you look at and I I go back and forth when I say they and we I never know which one I'm going to go with but the expectations being the joke right now is eight and four if they're worse than the joke yeah if we lose five games then yes the hot I don't think they would fire him but I do think that it's pretty it also depends on who's on the market and who they think they could get mm. and but money obviously money is not an issue you know Jack. I love Jack's rant about Michigan State. It's one of my favorite Jack Mack rivalries of all time. But the difference, you know, with, with Michigan State is he's saying, you know, they don't have the money to buy out Mel Tucker. A&M clearly has the money to buy out Jimbo Fisher. All right. Or Let's whatever. move on. Um, so there's a – I think the Boise State, the entirety of Boise State football as a national brand – is dead. I think it's dead. I think it's over. Yeah, we mentioned that. Boise on- State lost to um, UTEP last week. Not just lost to them, but lost to them in embarrassing fashion. It just got hammered. 
Um, Out could, physical. Couldn't move the ball, couldn't run, couldn't throw. Hank Bachmeyer looked terrible. And now Hank Bachmeyer, who was the quarterback, he plays his fourth game there. And if you remember the rules, four games is a red shirt now. So mm. he's got two years left. Yep. He can he can leave, claim this is a red shirt year, and not and he he'll be fine. He's got assistant coaches that are scattered throughout the the uh, country. I think one's at Kentucky. But Hank Bachmeyer now transferring from Boise State. Boise State is they are a I think they're a dead brand. I don't disagree. I just hate watching Boise State play at home. I've said that a million times. I can't. The blue field is the the worst gimmick in college football to me. And so I'm okay with them not being on national t- TV anymore. They used, they used to run the west yep. side of the country outside of the Pac-12, and even even including the Pac-12. Well, to take the Pac-12 out of the equation, on the west side of the country you got BYU who's better, Air Force is better. Uh, you know, I think Fresno is as good of a program as they are right and Colorado now. Colorado State has as much money as – as anyone yeah. in that G5 area. Yeah, I mean, they outside have. Outside of BYU, they, but Colorado State's barking. And the non Power 5 teams out there, they've been caught and passed by several teams. Who's the last NFL player from B- uh, Boise State? The oh, last God. one to matter? I, 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 I'm sure there's a couple that have snuck into the league, um, but I don't know, man. But I think Boise's a dead stick. Casey Smith? Yes. As of right now, you and I are not going to Starkville to the Mississippi State A&M game. We're busy. We're sick. It's just been tough. However, however, if we woke up on Friday morning, Saturday morning, Saturday morning even, and we decided we wanted to go to Starkville, game time would be the place that we would go because that is where you get the best tickets at the right price at the right time. If it's like day of or day before, late in the game tickets – Game Time specializes in having the right price for these. And not only could you go to any sporting event that you want to, obviously with us being a college football podcast, that's where we lean heavy. But you wake up tomorrow and wherever you are, mm-hmm. you say, oh, this concert is right. down the street from me. This concert's yeah. in my city. If Elton John's in your town tonight, go Machine get yourself Elton Kelly John tickets. is in Germany right now. I'm sure you could purchase tickets to that why, why would i care where machine gun kelly is well about? i don't care where elton john is so well uh, he's but better you know than who machine cares? Gun Ke- game time they sure do it's game created by cares. fans for fans game time is a new ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last minute deals on tickets to sports concerts and shows they guarantee the lowest price yet if you haven't tried it yet it sounds it sounds like we're just blowing smoke up if, if that's what you think i promise you give it a shot you do not know what you're missing because you think, oh, okay, well, I, I missed the first purchase. The secondary market's going to be tough. Mm-hmm. No, Game Time's going to get rid of that for you. They're going to give you the best price, the lowest price on the day of. We've had tons of Barstool people using it. You've used it. I've used it to go to Yankees game. Uh, you've used it to go to Celtics games, to other stuff, to shows. Justin Bieber. To Concerts. Justin Bieber. And it has worked. Everybody's who's Nobody I know who's used Game Time here hasn't been like over the moon about it. Right, and we've mentioned this before too, but we do a Game Time Game of the Week on the college football show. People in the crowd, in the live crowd, get to upgrade their tickets or go to the game because of Game Time. And if you're listening to this, you get an exclusive money off offer. Yes, you do. Download the Game Time app right now. Go to the account tab, create a login, and redeem code ROUGH. That's ROUGH. ROUGH. For $20, rough. $20 off your first purchase. Again, that's code ROUGH. Uh, when you download the Game Time app and you go create a login, redeem code ROUGH for $20 off your first purchase. Download Game Time. Last-minute tickets. Lowest price. Guaranteed. Okay, I was saying that. I thought we were going to say it together. All right, we continue with the news. Uh, what we got there? We have uh, Leighton uh, Van Der Esch. Yes, we have uh, we have several hurricane movements, and we, I guess this will be Thursday. We can update everything that's going to happen because Florida is under the gun with Hurricane Ian, and we have I hate I, that name for a hurricane. It doesn't imply strength, right? Ian just sounds like a nice guy. Yeah, like what's what's wrong with Ian? He's just coming to who's the give bat, you a little who's water. Who's the strongest Ian you've ever heard of? Ian Poulter, Kinsler. Ian Kinsler is a second baseman. Yeah, for but the he's Rangers? second yeah. baseman. That's the right, the right. Pussiest of, uh, yeah. Uh, and Pol- yeah, Poulter's first of all, Poulter's a pussy name, and yeah. he, and he's a golfer. He's a golfer. He's Ian, and he was never like. I don't know of any Ians that are Ian. Ian that are, that Sir are like, Ian McKellen. He, he, he's an actor. He was in Lord of the Rings. I don't know who that is. I just told you. I, no, I, I know. I can't picture him. Wasn't like, he? Sir Ian McKellen. Yeah, that there's sounds like right. not like this famous Ian. Like, why is Snoop Dogg I on don't, this list? I don't recognize any of the Ians. Ian. 
Ian Baker Finch was a golfer. Ian McKellen. Okay, there you go. Okay, that's that's uh, I said that earlier. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I was just double no doubling one. down. Ian Summerhalder. I don't know who that is. Handsome um, lad. He's one of those like celebrity teen. Okay. Teen Ian boss. Fleming, uh, related to Frank. Yes, he's Seamus' son. Ian Gomez. Don't know also who that related is. to Frank somehow. Um, yeah, okay. no. So Ian Ian's not a. Oh, Ian McShane, somebody. Who's Ian McShane? He was in, in Dead, Pikes uh, of Caribbean. Deadwood, right? <laughs> Yeah, I, I think know. he was in Deadwood. Never seen that. It's a very English name. Yeah, Ian, Ian, uh, Hurricane Ian does not give me uh, like Scottish, strong maybe. vibes. Well, anyway, Hurricane Sorry. Ian is is uh, I think Florida Eastern Washington is going to move to Sunday. Uh, you got Gamecock South Carolina is moving their game to Thursday. Uh, the Bulls in the uh, South Florida and ECU is moving to Boca Raton. I'm sure. I hate how they said Bulls versus Pirates. Yeah, like please. that's an NBA thing. Yeah. Use your name of your yeah. school. Like, yeah. South South Florida and ECU they'll play in Boca Raton. I'm sure F- great F- tickets F- will yeah. be available all the way up until kickoff of that one. Yep. Uh, but thoughts and prayers with those in Florida. Yes, in the absolutely. Path of Everybody, Hurricane Ian. Stay safe. We wish you had a stronger name coming towards you. Well, no, no. we don't. No, it, the name has nothing to do with it. name has screen. nothing to do with it. But oh. if you are going to be like forced out of your house and home, oh, definitely. you don't want it to happen because of Ian. I agree with that. 100%. So what would be the what would be the strongest hurricane name? Gunther? No. No. I, I wouldn't fuck Brock. With hurricane Brock? Oh, yeah. Brock yeah. is like, that's strong. If Hurricane Brock was coming down my door, oof. I mean, obviously Karen would be Will we ever Karen would just would be sca- a bitch. Karen <laughs> would scare everybody. Will we ever just switch uh switch hurricane names to these new pussy ass names, Hurricane Jaden or Colton? Probably. We're going to run out. Hurricane Colton. Hur- <laughs> Hurricane Colton just sleeps Chad. on the couch at his parents' house Hurricane all day. Hurricane Chad would be something. I think there's been a Hurricane Chad before. I think there has. There has. Yeah. Uh, I think if the, if you had a Hurricane Karen coming towards you, you would, you'd have to take oh, it the, seriously. I think the internet would break. Well, yeah, Hurricane I mean, the, inter- Karen. the internet would shut down. It would be like memes. You know how like they put the Michael Jordan face on everything? Yes. It would. They'd put a Karen haircut on the on the Hurricanes cloud outline. Especially in 2000. If- there was, was a Hurricane Karen? Karen? Hurricane Chad. Oh. Oh, yeah, Hurricane Chad, of course. Uh, I was, yeah, it really tore my family apart. It was brutal. Um, no, I'm just kidding. That was actually messed up because it could have actually torn families apart. It probably did. You're um, just an asshole. I'm just an asshole. That being said, I wonder if within the community, I know there's ways that they name it. Like, you think there's people within that community that are mad at the names are very white? Probably, Oh, yes. right? I, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, like, I, where's the hurricane? Um, there's a, been There's a hurricane a of, Karen. A lot of Hurricane Karens, by the way. Typhoon Karen. Yeah. In 1962. I think I remember Tropical Storm Karen because it was memed a lot. In 2019, it would have to be. I mean, if it wasn't memed a lot, that would be a travesty for the internet. Mm. Anyways. Do you see that video of the person in Florida who parked their car inside their house? Yes. For uh, the prep for the hurricane? It's, it's kind of funny. Hurricanes suck. Yep. Dynamite story, Jack. I mean, I, it was a funny video that I saw. Stop that. Hurricanes suck. Hurricanes do suck. But they at least give you a warning they're coming. anti-hurricane. They at least give you a warning they're coming. That is true. Yes. They, I, like, unlike tornadoes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. I hate college football games on Sundays. They just yeah. throw you know what we haven't had in a while? Nah, I don't want to jinx it. Oh, no. We haven't had a big earthquake. In, Stop it. We haven't had a big no. earthquake in the United States in a while. It's been Brandon. a minute. What well, are you there's doing? There's no way to predict them. Well, I know it's just it's been a minute. I mean, What's the once the last big earthquake in Cal like California? I, I don't think like there has one. The nineties? Yeah, you're right. There's been some bad ones in Mexico. Yeah, and worldwide. Wasn't yeah. there they, one? They, like they're recently? still they're still hot in the streets worldwide. There was a there was an earthquake in L. A. recently, but it wasn't like super. I think it was damaging. in the DR or Chile. Like oh the yeah, yeah. Outside oh, Haiti. Of, no, yes. Haiti had another one. I think outside of the United oh, States. Oh yeah, they're, no, they're still hot in the streets everywhere else. But I, I just think. Well, I think earthquakes fell off in the United uh, the States. The last earthquake in the USA occurred 43 minutes ago. Well, yeah, that's exactly. but those it, are jokes. There's earthquakes all the time. Have you ever felt an earthquake? Mm, I was depends. I was in well, LA. My third kid was conceived. 1994. Okay. Looks Ew, like huh? there's a bunch that happened in Alaska, but that doesn't count. Alaska's not the United States. Everybody the knows that. Summer of 2019, I was in LA, and it, where I was was not like super crazy, but we definitely felt it. And I was like, "Am I drunk?" Or was this, and then my phone blew up. Like, are you good? Are you, Were you okay? Drunk? I was, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. I, yeah. Well. It is time for our September awards show. It should probably have a name. The Septembies. Ew, I don't the, like the, the way the that sep- The Sept... 
The Septagons. Ooh, mm. The Sept. How about just the, the Timbies? The Septuplets. The, two the Timbies. The Timbies? Like Sept. Sept. Well. The, that's not terrible. I, I like Timbies. something around like it being too early. Tobies would be October. Oh, I like the Tobies. Yes, and then we'll have the the Vembies. The Vembies. Burrs. Okay, so the yeah. the, tim- the why not the Timbers? Do you like Timbies or Timbers? I think Timbies makes it sound a little. All right, all right. The Timby Awards. That that was just a pointless argument. It wasn't nothing. an argument. It was just a workshop. Yeah, I know, but just a, the dumbest thing. I'm sorry. I'm doped up. I know how the cold medicine feels, so I'm just going along with you. So we have, and I wrote down the best the best team of September, mm-hmm. best player or team of September. Well, we have both. Uh, oh, yeah, best team of September, best player of September, the best game so mm-hmm. far of college football, the best moment, the most disappointing team, and the team slash player you were most right about, the team slash player you were most wrong about. Yes. Those are the, the awards. You had some others you wanted to throw out there? Yeah, if we need them. Okay, maybe at the end we'll, we'll have some more. Um, so it is now time, and by the way, we put out a tweet, so you Roughnecks will have a vote on the team at the end of the show. Oh, nice. Brandon. Hi, Case. One of the hardest things on game day, whether we're going, <laughs> oh, one of the toughest things on game day yes. that I deal with personally right now is making sure that I get enough electrolytes and also that I'm getting enough protein because, right. you know, these are long days. You don't really know where you're going to be able to get your nutrition, how you're going to stay hydrated. But then our good friends at Live Pure. Yes. They helped me out. Live Pure can help you hydrate. They can give you energy. They can help you with recovery. They have protein the for after a huge. workout. Yes, I, and I've been working out a lot lately. You've yeah, noticed yeah, that. Yeah, you look great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do look great. Well, but I also know you've not been working out. But the thing I is, I have. I worked out once on Sunday. Oh, okay. Huh? They have a delicious protein boost that doesn't make you feel bloated. Their recovery drink or their recovery add-on to your drink helps ease muscle soreness. And as an alternative to alternative to alcohol, it is. And I just, I got to do it because I've been. Do con- it. The dream sickle. They got the dream sickle. They Their flavors are so good. They got blue raspberry. They got lemonade. They got orange. They have these powders that you put into your drink. You mix it up. It's yep. a drink mixer. And they've got orange dream sickle. And I just love it so much. I want to, I want to live in it. The flavor that you forgot to mention with the protein. The Oreo. Cookies and cream. Cookies and cream. Yeah. Yes. The cookies and cream. And that's the thing with protein is that people forget sometimes you don't just take protein after you work out mm-hmm. or before you work out. You have to have protein throughout your day. Sometimes you just want to be able to take the little packets mm-hmm. right out of your purse, your bag, your pocket, whatever. That's the best thing about Live Pure is that they have these super convenient things that you can get anything that you need right in that little packet. Live Pure has amino acids, less sugar, less sodium. It's vegan, it's gluten-free, and actually tastes good, unlike most nutrition products on the market. Facts. Go to livepure.com, use code ROUGH25 for 25... Go ahead. I was going to say, continue. You can tell them how to spell Live Pure. Well, there's no E's. It's L-I-V-P-U-R.com. L-I-V-P-U-R.com. Use code ROUGH25 for 25% off your order. Again, ROUGH25, 25% off your order at livepure.com. That's L-I-V-P-U-R. Dot com. Yummy. So, the best. E- <laughs> oh no. Maybe it's not the best team of September because we all agree George is the best team in football right now. Maybe it's the team who had the best September. Okay. And that can be open to interpretation. I feel like all of these and can open be. to everything. So, Casey Smith, I will let you lead off the Timbies because you always start with the hot blonde. Oh, Casey Smith. That was sweet. Who, which team had the best September in the Timby Awards? I, you kind of just buried the lead a little bit for me, but I think Georgia, even though it is the cliche pick, they are the number one team in the country. They won the national championship last year. However, when you look at their September, they outscored their opponents 169 to 32. We saw where most of those points came from, and that was last week against Kent State. But I'm going to take it even further that not only did Georgia win it, and this is why I think they're the best team of September, because it's not just that they're beating them with the defense that we knew was elite. Stetson Bennett has really stepped up and made Mm -hmm. that offense a lot better than last year, which is hard to say since they won the national title. So the storyline going into this year was can they repeat through September? Not only does it look like they can repeat, they look like they're even better than they were in 2021. Georgia has won September for me. Casey, you ignorant slut. Oh, whoa, that was 
That I've was. I've always wanted to, to, to use that as a transition. <laughs> Damn. Oh. That felt kind of good, though. It, yeah, it just shocked me. Yeah, okay. We went from <laughs> I was the hot blonde to an ignorant slut in well, like two seconds. The hand gives a flower and strikes. I'm okay you with know, that. You, you know, know, you're allowed to call me whatever you want, Brandon. Uh, oh, excuse me. Okay. Uh, the answer is not Georgia. Okay. The team. Yeah, my award, my Timby the, is my Timby. Well, I, I, my, my Timbys are the best Timbys. No. I've always people so have always said I have the best Timbys. Yes, but see, here's the thing, Brandon, is on your Timby list you have what I just said as the f- best team in September. No, 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 no. I wrote multiples, okay. but I knew, I knew I was not going to go first, so I would have to adjust. Okay. But that that's not the team I would have said first anyway, because the team that had the best September, Rock Chalk Jayhawk, mm-hmm. it is the Kansas Jayhawks. Two and a half was their win total. They have sailed past that. They're four and zero with road wins at Houston, road wins at West Virginia. They are they beat Duke at home, who also had a pretty damn good September for their standards. Um, the Kansas Jayhawks are four and zero in a world in college football where they haven't they haven't won more than three games in a decade, over a decade. They got this coach. They're gonna have to play defense on him. They're gonna have to keep him in Lawrence. They're gonna have to pay up to keep Lance Leipold because Nebraska is gonna come calling. Everybody's gonna come calling. But right now. This is the best September. If you're a Kansas fan, you're listening to this. This is the best September of your life outside of that magical 2007. Did you see the quote from Lance Leipold? I don't know exactly when it was, but he was talking about that the good Lord brought him and his family to Lawrence and how much he loves it there. And when I read that, it was just so wholesome to me. It didn't feel like it was like a Dabo type quote, which I still like, you know, believe he believes that. But it was like, it was just such like a, oh, he's cute. And I just loved it. It was so wholesome. I still think teams are going to try to get him out of there, but I still think he he might be a guy that sticks. First of all, he's older. He's like 59. And, and, and Money he's, talks, Brandon. And he, he also, like, he, he recognizes Kansas gave him this D1 opportunity. So we'll – or not D1, but uh, FBS op- Power 5 opportunity. So we'll see. Uh, Jack Mack, you will have Tim Bees as well, who was the uh, team that owned the month of September. Came down to the wire, a lot of last-second votes. Mm. But after this weekend, I'm going to give it to Minnesota. Minnesota had a very impressive September, uh, a September that was needed, and they capped it off this past weekend with a dominating win over Michigan State at Michigan State, and they are fully in control of the Big Ten West. And shout-out to Minnesota, Ski you Ma. Ski you Ma. Ski you Ma. Yep, row row that damn boat. Katie Stats, which um, team won your your Timby for team of September? I am gonna go with App State. I know that their most recent game. I know, I know, but I'm still looking at the the hail mary at Troy that n- the entire internet blew up over. Chase Bryce helping fans off, and then a, the A and M win and the UNC shootout. I think between all and f- they had game day mm-hmm. and game day. So I know there's four games. I know the last one was a very bad loss, but the first three, they were probably top five headlines, and they've it, never been that for the. It was probably the most publicized month. September of App State's life. Um, yeah, yeah, we talked about it over the weekend with how many times we've said Boone, North Carolina, this f- month. It's more than ever in my lifetime. So I, I'm I don't hate that pick at all. Throw out a couple teams we didn't say. Okay. Nobody gave their Timby to the Washington Huskies. 4-0 with a couple of decent little wins. Um, nobody gave their Timby to the Tennessee Volunteers. 4-0 with a win over Florida and a win at Pitt. Can I say why I didn't do the Tennessee? Sure. I don't. I think they've done, at least for my, what I kind of thought they would do. Mm-hmm. They, they are just chugging right along. Nothing has been like absolutely insane yet. They've done as expected so far. It's not above it yet. All right. Now we transition from, and I'm going to go first here. We transition from the best team of September to the best player of September. Okay. The player who, if we were handing out the Heisman right now, who you would give it to? And mine would go to a name I never thought I would say. Can I yeah. guess? Are you, are you going to do what I think you're about to do? Uh, I don't know. Well, I don't want to steal your shine. It's not my pick, but I think I know what you're going to do. I'm giving it to Michael Penix That's Jr. What I thought you were going to do. A wow. guy that was a former laughing stock on this show, a guy that was uh, had a terrible year at Indiana due to injury last year, a guy I didn't think he had this in him. I really didn't. He goes out to Washington and isn't just good. Folks, 
Who's do you know who's leading the country in passing yards right now? Michael it's Penix. Michael Penix Jr. Do you know who's leading the country in yards per game as a passer right now? Michael, Michael Penix. Penix Jr. Do you know who's leading the country in those two things I've already said? Michael <laughs> Penix Jr. He also has a very high rating. Uh, he's averaging 9.7 yards an attempt. He is throwing the ball. He's got 12 touchdowns, one interception, 1,388 yards. That's more than anybody in college football. It's Michael Penix Jr. Even if you told me he'd go out there and be good, in no way, shape, or form do I ever think he would be leading the country in passing yards after four weeks. He is the surprise of the year. He is the player of the year so far, and that is my guy. That is my Timby Award for the player of September. So you would give him the Heisman right now? I As of right now, yes. I mean, there's no, oh, I, no reason to hand out a Heisman right now, yes, but yes. Right. That's a, it's I th- a great pick. I think he's been the best player in college football through through – uh, four weeks. And and if we could go back to just a few years ago on this podcast, whenever Indiana fans were all up in our butts mm-hmm. about not putting Michael Penix there, boy, what a, a switch! You have to if you're an Indiana fan, you got to be down bad about that. Yeah, you got to be wondering what what the hell? What are our coaches doing? Yeah, well, how can this guy? I mean, this guy. Because even when they had a good year, he was he was like fine. Right, but he's now like you said. I mean, he's leading the country in multiple statistics, which is crazy. What was what's your hand do that for? I I was just trying to look up a QBR and I couldn't I wanted to see where Michael Penix and the internet was just being really slow so I just went oh. like that I was like what's wrong it with wasn't the towards us he was just all right what about you your Timby award for player of the month of September I have two on the list oh wow that's cop out well no I'm gonna I'm gonna pick one caveat no 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 I'm gonna pick one if I was going to give my Heisman trophy out right now my Timby would go to who I think is going to win the Heisman this year or be up there, and I'm, I'm going to pick Caleb Williams, and I, I know that's kind of a chalk pick. Hinden Hooker was my other one just because of what Tennessee has done, and the way that he played against Florida was huge, but the reason I landed on Caleb is because you look at his stats, they're super gaudy. USC is, was tested last week against Oregon State, but how they won the game was because he connected with Jordan Addison. Again, there's nothing that he's doing that's going to be the downfall of USC if there is one this year. The defense is still questionable, but Caleb's stats are exactly where they thought they were. The hype is where they thought it would be. And there were a lot of people that thought, and I know Jake Hayner got hurt, but thought, you know, if they were going to could lose to Florida State. Definitely thought they could lose Fresno last State. Or Fresno State, excuse yeah. me. Definitely thought they could lose last week, which they almost did, but it's not going to be his fault if they lose. Caleb Williams is playing like we expected Caleb Williams to play. He is my Timby for best player of September. Jack McGuire, you have a Timby to give out to the player of September. Who do you give yours to? I was shocked you didn't give it to him, but it's Jalen Daniels. He's had the best numbers. Uh, he has the most um, on the finally pulled up after our internet took a while to bring it up, but the quarter QBR rankings, and he leads in QBR. He leads in EPA. He is a, a force to be reckoned with. And he's someone that has really taken a huge step forward. Last year he showed signs, but nothing spectacular. Talking about Kansas' as quarterback, by the way. Yes, yeah. Jalen Daniels. Not Jaden, right. Jalen. And he is electric to watch. He runs, he throws, he wins. And Kansas is a force to be reckoned with. And every time I think about the Big 12, it's like, man, could this low-key be the best conference in the country just because there's no booty in it? Um, we'll see. That being said, I don't <laughs> there think there is a booty in it. What general booty? Yes, they play for Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Oh, that's right. Follows Sorry. me on Instagram too. Shout out General Booty. It's such a good name. When you said you follow General Booty on Instagram, I thought you meant something else. No, I follow uh, General Booty. He's the back quarterback for Oklahoma. Mm. And also, probably a, there is an Instagram or OnlyFans model that's for sure named General Booty. Mm-hmm. Uh, it has to be Katie Stats, who's the player of September. Uh, I'm going to go with Jordan Travis from S- FSU. I I'm think glad you did. Even though I don't, I don't think he will win the Heisman, I think when you're looking at what we thought, preseason hype, like Head and Hooker has been great, but I think there's already kind of word around him. No one is looking at Jordan Travis. I think he's really been carrying the Florida State team. Uh, I hope the game versus Wake Forest happens, and I think that'll be cool to see those offenses going. He ahead. leads in all sorts of categories. I know you have it pulled up for PFF right now. But he also leads in a bunch of other categories, too. It's crazy how good he is. And you kind of saw the fall off from FSU on that Friday night against – that kid ended up playing well. I forgot his, na- his name, but the Rotomaker. back quarterback. 
Yeah, Rodemaker. Rodemaker. Not Rodenhoover. Rodenhoover. Jordan Travis was a running back last year. He wasn't a quarterback. Yeah, he definitely showed some signs of getting a little bit better. But this year, he's taken such a huge step. Huge. And Florida State, I was, I'm happy they were mentioned because they deserve it. Yeah, they could have been mentioned in the uh, team of, of September as well. Um, what has been the best game so far through uh, through the month of September? I guess I'll start with you, Jack McGuire. The best game. Oh, this is hard because it's like, what was the most exciting? What was the most memorable? Da, 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 da. But best overall game. Top. Glad you were ready. But I'm going to go with Florida State and LSU. I think that was an iconic game. There was points of the game that it was really bad, but the ending mm -hmm. uh, overall, it was one, one of the more memeable games of the year so far as well. Florida State, LSU, first weekend of the season. Shout out to both of them. Casey Smith. Uh, I have the Texas-Bama game which I know was kind of ugly at times, was kind of slow at times, Quinn Ewers getting hurt. But when you look at the top build games of the 2022 season, that was definitely on everybody's list. And for it to end the way that it did, uh, you know, having Bryce Young have the, the game-winning drive to set up a field goal and to only win by one point, just incredible drama. I wish that game was in prime time because it did kind of get swallowed by the rest of the day. But – the fact that at that point it was like, wow, Texas can maybe beat Alabama with Hudson Card, and Alabama still came out, and then Nick Saban was pissed. There was all the drama with the horns down stuff. Overall, the best game of the year so far to me. Katie Stats. That one was my pick, too. I have another one, though, but I have to add on to Casey. It also – the image of what we think of the SEC and the Big 12 got shifted a lot because I know you can't compare everything – but both teams were not what we expected. But I think for this, I'm going to go with West Virginia Pitt because I think it's just the rivalry. I feel like everyone was talking about it. They missed the game. It hadn't been played since, like, 2011. Um, the ending, I actually was able to see that game. But, yeah, I think that was so far one of the best. The answer is uh, has already been given, but Florida State LSU game has been the game of the year so far. It was uh, thrilling, surprising stupefying it had it had points where both teams look good points where both teams look bad and it had an ending that will you'll talk about for years uh it was the perfect uh sunday night opening game which uh, florida state sunday night opening games that end in crazy fashion just a new tradition but i thought florida state lsu was the mm -hmm. best game of the year so far and it was like you mentioned it being on sunday night being a standalone game yeah just always helps but yeah, I mean that Some one. Great that, fan bases. Yes, that one was definitely, especially from a gambling standpoint. If you were on that, I mean that whole game was awesome. So this one might go off the beaten path a little bit, but it can take it. You can take it wherever you want to take it. Mm -hmm. I'm. I can already tell you, I'm going off the beaten the path. The Timby for the best moment of September. Go, Casey Smith. Uh, we've already talked about this team a lot, and you actually mentioned my exact point. But the best moment for me is when Kansas hit their win total for the season in week three. And that's all we've been talking about. The moment to me is just September being the moment for Kansas. I mean, Kansas is all we've been talking about. Like just the when they hit that over and it was like, wow, Lance Leipold really has his team going. Then them beating Duke. So my overall best moment would just be Kansas football winning three games. Um, Jack Mack, what's the best moment of the season so far? Uh, I think it was this past Saturday, Adrian Martinez. At his phenomenal mm -hmm. display, and it really shows how college football has evolved. Uh, he played Oklahoma last year for a program that he tried to help turn around, but it didn't really work. Uh, he tried his best, and he knew it was time to go, and he left. And then he went to Kansas State, and he went back to the same place, won, and he was the reason that they won. Obviously, there's other players on the team. Deuce Vaughn helps. The defense helped. Da -da 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 -da. But Adrian Martinez, great moment. Huge moment for him. He's been in college football forever. Meme to death. But this was his moment. He showed up when he had to. There was third and 13s that he just scrambled up the middle. And he. it's, it's what college football is all about. The comeback stories. The great moments of beating teams you're not supposed to. Shout out Adrian Martinez and shout out to Kansas State. 
Wildcats. Catherine's statistics. I'm going to go with the aftermath of App State beating Texas A&M. That's a I, very good one. I think... The the video of them... Why you got to bring up old shit? This was the best No, moment. no, I... I think... Yeah, just the internet rediscovering yell leaders, just ever seeing Boone explode. It, it was just... The DMCA, the, you can yeah. say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. For me, you never know how college football is going to hit you and when it's going to hit you and when it's going to gonna feel thick on you. Like, it's Ew. just... It, it's, you never know when, when it's really going to hit you. And I don't know why, but I was sitting at home. I had been sick for a couple of days. So mm-hmm. I'm sitting there, and when Virginia Tech and West Virginia kicked off the other night... It's such a good I don't know one. why when when they the way they shot Inner Sandman the way they let you feel it like the the announcers shut up for about seven minutes they took you through the locker room with Virginia Tech you you had this uh, big overarching shot from a drone of the whole thing and then these crowd shots and when they play they let Inner Sandman play and play and play and you got to feel the whole thing as if you were there. I don't know why man that was just my favorite moment of the season so far it was and Virginia Tech ended up getting killed but. Feeling that, feeling like you were in that stadium. We're still in the shadows of COVID doing what it did to seasons a couple of years ago and crowds and fans. And anytime we can get just a pure in the crowd stadium moment like that, it feels so good. May I ask you a question? It's just me and you here talking. Okay. I won't you know, tell anybody. We don't have to tell anybody in Knoxville or anything like that. You know, when we, we went to Knoxville and we did the show, we did like the top songs yeah. in college football. And I noticed that everyone except for me put Rocky Top as number one. Right. Now, I don't discredit Rocky Top. Yeah. But don't you think that the inner Sandman moments on social media hit so much harder than Rocky Top? I tell you, no, I, for, for that, I do. Okay. Inner Sandman it's, it's okay. you can hits very it out hard. Here. Inner Sandman hits very hard. But Rocky Top is still the most college football song that ever college football. You can yes. take Inner Sandman, you can use it for other things, but if you play Rocky Top in a bar, if you play it at a tailgate, if you play it, if you just listen to an oldies station on the road and you hear it, your mind goes to Tennessee football every single time ever. If you're listening to the 90s station, Inner Sandman comes on, maybe you think about Virginia Tech, but you might just be into the song and not even think about it. I do agree with that point because, like, you know, we had this argument with Dave on the show that a lot of people would say is Mariano Rivera. Like, yeah. but I would think of Virginia Tech. I am not discrediting, I mean, Jump Around. I'm not discrediting any other song because jump they're all awesome. Not even close to Wisconsin's song. But no, but my point is, is that when we talk about these electric moments, because when, when any social media account gets a hold of a good inner Sandman, everyone is talking about and it. And one more thing Tennessee's been bad, really bad. I'm telling you right now, if Tennessee were good, if they were national title good, if they were in the playoff, Rocky Top would be the most hated song in the country because they play it after every touchdown, every score, every good thing. Rocky Top is is not as uh, present throughout college football right now just because they haven't been good. But when they get good, I'm telling you, everybody's going to hate it. Well, and that's what, for that reason, it's my number one song in college football. That's what sat there and told us. Yeah, he Y'all did. better pray. We mm-hmm. don't go 9-3 and, and bring in Nico Imaleva. Speaking of Big T, and I know we, we've talked about this too, I've never seen that man anywhere near as happy as he was on Saturday. Oh, that dude can throw down. He Well, he just, I mean, yeah. the smile, he was radiating. He was dancing. He was glowing. Yeah. He had, uh, we were out on Friday night, and he had Arian's chain on. Oh, my God. And he had oh, yeah, a the game. Oh, yeah. 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 And he had a polo kind of like tucked underneath. And I am. Could I, not be happier. You and I are probably are both jealous, right? I mean, like, yes. Dave has gotten his moment at Michigan taking the show back there. Big T just got his moment taking the show. I, they're not, we, we don't have gambling states, but I want to take it to Mississippi State. You want to take it to College State? You guys are sure. at least closer. At least you have casinos. Yeah, I, I do think we'll have gambling before you will. Long before. But That's you know what will happen. You know what will happen. What? Come we'll on. Go to the Grove instead? Yeah, they'll, they'll go to the Grove to fuck with me. Yeah, but you could have a really yeah. good moment of, of – Heel. Playing the heel, which you like doing. I yeah, but if I, buddy, we gonna we're gonna test that again. Well, I have a feeling that if we were to do that, yeah. there would be like nets up. Like we would have to go full blown game day and like have protection for all. But yeah, no, it is. I would love to. I say this like all the time. Like I know you know you mentioned the A and M stuff, like with all the cringy stuff that's happened. But like going to a game at Kyle Field, a big game at Kyle Field, be awesome. would be awesome. Bringing the show there would be awesome. I just don't think it's going to happen because gambling's never going to be legal there. All right. Now, back to the Timbies. 
Everybody do a moment. Everybody did a moment, right? Yes. Um, disappointing team. Who's the most disappointing team of 2022, of September 2022? Casey Smith. I feel like I'm going to take Jax here, but I think we can we can double down. I have to take Michigan State. Uh, I thought they would be the most disappointing team in the Big Ten. Yeah, it was hitting me earlier. What was? Somebody want to close the fucking window? The, it is closed. It is closed. Brother. It happens. Look at me. This time, he, this, this time happens. of day, it happens. It happens. It, it, and you know what? By the end of the podcast, it shifts over to me. Okay. So just put your sunglasses on. Do you have them? No. Uh, so Michigan State. So uh, I want to close the window? The windows are closed. What? Just relax. Jack made a perfect argument, laid it out perfectly on the podcast on Saturday, that you know, outside of beating Michigan last year and then the shit COVID year, Mel Tucker has done nothing to mm -hmm. deserve that contract that he got. Mm -hmm. They were all high and he mighty. He did just get a 2024, class of 2024, top 200 defensive back commit. That's not a unanimous four-star, but he is oh. a four-star on a few services. They're very proud and happy about that one, yeah. Oh, that's a big win. That's a reason to pay class a guy. Class of 2024, not this year, next year. Yeah, way to pay a guy a ton of money. No way and, he decommits. Not and I don't have the beef with, with Michigan State like Jack does. However, the way, where they thought they were going to be <laughs> versus where they are, and anybody, and I saw people responding to you, Jack, saying that it wasn't embarrassing losing to Minnesota. Yes, it was, because of the way that they lost. And we I talked about it on Saturday oh, night. It's revisionist history now. The graphic where they only had one offensive yard to like 200-plus, embarrassing. If you are a Michigan State fan, the hope that you had after beating Michigan last year, paying your guy all that money, and where you are now, you have to be the most disappointed fan base in the country. Jack, who's the most disappointing team of September? Boston College. That this is a team that you're a real cunt, you know that. <laughs> Me or him? You can see my. I sheet. didn't. I did not. I did not read your sheet. I swear I'm to glad God, that was directed. I do Jack, know nothing. who you're going to say one team that you're most right and wrong about, but I don't know the other ones. Boston College, brutal, just brutal, brutal, brutal. You really thought they had a great chance at a phenomenal season. Uh, I think. What? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Did you uh, you had the password again, didn't you? I don't have the password. I've never had okay, the password sorry, to the Jack. Tr Twitter account. I went to go re I went to go What? That's a good gif on on our our, our trivia. Our, okay. our, that's a good tweet, Jack. I don't want to interrupt Jack. I just was going You did interrupt Jack. Well, I was going to retweet the question because we're getting close Jack. to it, Jack. I apologize. No, it's all it's all good. We all The man's sometimes. doing his job by tweeting out nah, yeah, gifs with with the questions. It's sometimes Reactions happen. It's not that big okay. of a deal. Okay. But we that is a great – it's more a celebration of Texas A&M there than anything. Yeah. You guys tradition. have a unique culture with the yell just, eaters and doing all this shit. I just ask if I can DMCA this gif. Yeah, well, you think we could do that? Well, do whatever you, you got to do. You probably I could. <laughs> DMCA means. Um, Anyways, I'm sorry, Jack. Continue on your Boston College. No, rant. Boston College is really disappointing. I thought they had a chance to not compete for the ACC, but maybe have an 8-4, and 9-3 season. They have Clemson coming to town. And, geez, now I – don't even think of them as anything. Uh, they were embarrassed against Florida State this past weekend, embarrassed against a bad Virginia Tech. Rutgers. And they even lost to Rutgers at home. Um, and Rutgers isn't as bad as they have, once have been, but they they have two one of the best, I would say, at least we were saying coming into the season, quarterback-wide receiver combos in the country, Phil Jerkovich and Zay Flowers, and it has turned into nothing. I know they have offensive line troubles, but geez, a wheeze. What? I liked that. That was good. Jeez a wheeze. No, um, he said Louise, right? No, I said jeez a wheeze. I <laughs> did. Wrong. Okay, I uh, I don't have much to add. The most disappointing team to me is also Boston College. Uh, I did have them competing for the ACC. I thought they would really uh, – I thought the coach was good. I thought the quarterback was good. I thought the receiver was good. I thought they would be fine. I thought they would be competing in the ACC, and they are not. They are trash. They're the most disappointing team. Mm -hmm. uh, Katie Stats. Uh, this might be more based on what I expected than the national media, but for me it's Nebraska – I mm. was very interested to see what Mark Whipple would do. I was about Casey Thompson. They had the pieces. They lost eight games by single digits. Yep. Nope, it's Nebraska. Ne I shouldn't have expected Nebraska any better. Nebraska is so disappointing. They're just dead to me at this point. Yeah. Yeah. They're just buried. Like they're just, it's like, oh, let's see who they hire. Yeah. That's it's like they're one. dead, which probably means they're the most disappointing. Yeah. I mean, also, we haven't mentioned several teams. Like I, I think based on that first game when Northwestern won, we were pleasantly surprised. They've been a massive disappointment. They've been bad. Yeah, but I mean, they're always kind of low-key Yeah, but, but, but ba when they beat Nebraska, we at least had hope for Northwestern coming out of that yeah. game. Yeah, oh, definitely. And, and it's an even year for and, Nebraska. And then they've been god-awful. Um, Wisconsin, you could say. Wisconsin's been disappointing. Uh, I, Miami. I, I, I was well, offense. Brandon, you know, 
what I've noticed recently? How good I look? Well, yes, of course. That's number one. Number two is how many people in this office sit kind of lopsided? Because of their wallets. Because of their wallets. Yeah. You know, I've never understood, you know, women have to wear all sorts of uncomfortable things. Wallets in your back pocket being bulky and huge, bad. I'm going to be honest with you. I always just did it. I always just did it with a with a bulky wallet, and you sat on it, and you're off kilter, like sitting on the train, you're off kilter, and you just don't even think about it because it's just one of the, the prices you pay for being a man. But a slim wallet is a life changer. It is. A, a narrow wallet that doesn't take up room, that doesn't change the way you sit, is so great. And Ridge Wallet is an ultra-slim, minimalist wallet. It holds up to 12 cards. It has room for cash. Ridge wallet is a life changer. Well, and the the biggest thing is, is like a lot of times when you see the smaller wallets that they have out there on the market, it holds like two cards. Right. Everyone has more than two cards. You've got your ID, you've got your credit cards, yeah. your rewards cards, whatever. And I'm rich. And you're rich. So not only are you going to be holding a lot of cash, 12 cards, and it still stays minimal. I mean, Noah, I am rich. You would be sick if you knew how many cards I had put in my that's, wallet. Well, and that's why you also have both the carbon fiber and the burnt titanium. Burnt titanium sounds delicious. There are over 30 <laughs> colors and styles, including the carbon fiber burnt titanium. It's made with RFID blocking technology. Protects you from digital pickpocketers because these people will get you any which They're way from nice Sunday. They're not nice people. They will get you. They also have a new key case to help organize Huge. your keys. It secures anywhere from two to six keys. Organizes them in a compact silhouette. And fold out for easy access. They got six colors in that, including carbon fiber and the always delicious sounding burnt titanium. I don't know why you always act like you're going to be eating these wallets. But I they, just love burnt food. They're not edible. The burnt, burnt French fries, burnt chips, burnt, burnt popcorn. Well, the burnt titanium is... Burnt ends? The burnt ends are good. Yeah. They are good. But I will say, you know, it is, it's October. I mean, it's September right now. By the end of the week, it's October. Maybe you're starting to think early about little stocking stuffers. Sure, maybe sure. some gifts. This Ridge Wallet, both the, the key organizer and the actual wallets themselves are fantastic gifts. They go really to, are. Go to Ridge.com. Use the code UR for 10% off the your letters. order. And that's UR, U-R, for 10% off your order at Ridge.com. And every dollar spent on the website before September 30th, hey, that's running out, you'll be entered to win a brand new upgraded Ford Bronco or $75,000 if you prefer cash. Quite literally three days left. I'm going to choose both. Well, you can't. You have to choose one. But either one is great. $75, 75, 75 thousand mm -hmm. in cash or a Ford Bronco. Pretty sick. So yes, we're going to do team or player you were most right about, team or player you were most wrong about. So you get to crow, and then you got to take one on the chin. Uh, would you like to go first? You get to crow is because you can also eat crow. No, crowing, though, is bragging. And then eating crow is is not is the doing brag. the opposite of it. Okay, yes. all right. So you can cr do your crowing right now. Who's the team you were most right about? I've been right about a few. Well, I have, eh. but the one that I think I got into the most unbiased beef with when we put out our predictions would be the Notre Dame Fighting Irish when they came out at number five. In the top 10, I said they are wildly overrated. I said, I don't know why we're not – why are we not looking at the fact that Brian Kelly left? They have a new quarterback. They have a new coach. I understand he was on the staff. But it was like people forgot that they lost their incredibly successful coach. They lost to Marshall, as we know. Lost to Ohio State, which fine. But – this, and I gave them all the credit in the world for getting a decent win against North Carolina. However – the, I went back and looked today because I love that you can do that on Twitter. Just, you know, search your name with right. Notre Dame. The shit that – not just me, just this podcast was catching from Notre Dame fans was just like, you guys don't know shit. Every single year, Notre Dame fans are always up in our mentions. And we were called ignorant. Every word you can possibly think of. And then those same accounts, because I just clicked on a few of them, right. they're all like, fire Marcus Freeman. Get us out of here. This is going to be a long season. Notre Dame was – massively overrated at number five. They've proven it. And I tried to tell you guys, just because they're Notre Dame and they're the independent school does not warrant them being in the playoff conversation every single year. They've proven it to you. I'm sorry. You are not good this year. Jack, which team were you most right about? <laughs> I was the most right about two Big Ten, big ten teams. I was the most right about Michigan State. Uh, that's right. Uh. 
Love There's the nothing you can do anything about that. And it's about to get worse, too. You're about to be two and six losers. And then uh, I was most right about Penn State as well. So Yeah, you were on Penn State very, very early. Uh, Katie Stats, who were you most right about? Spencer Rattler. You Going didn't think he deserved all the accolades? Nope. I remember – I don't – I know it was on this podcast. I forgot who, but I feel like the consensus was new start, new OC. Well, I said new, that. I said, I that. said that. Okay, then it was, never, it was everyone. Um, and I just said, like, it's, it's going to be the same person. He got benched. He's not going to be great again. And I was right. Not only was he not the same person, he's worse. Probably. He's worse than he was at Oklahoma. All right. So you were right. Well, give yourself. I was also right on Georgia's defense, too. Time for I'm the heart and soul uh, to speak. Um, <laughs> the team that i was most right about and oh not my only god not, you all right he's looking up spencer rattlers spencer rattlers qbr the punter had a better one with that trick play the heart and souls fucking talking right. sir fucking go talk, ahead man. shut the fuck up okay more wine your grace i'm sorry you're not a game of thrones person keep going all right the team i was most right about and it isn't just in this room but there wasn't a national college football pundit in college football telling you this summer that Jalen Daniels was going to be good at Kansas and that Kansas was going to be a pretty good team and that you better watch them and that Lance Leipold's a top three coach in the Big 12. I got made fun of for all three of those takes. And all three of those takes are so right. When you get the right coach, you can win. You can win. You can win. doesn't matter if you're at Kansas, if you're at Boston College, Mississippi State, wherever you are, if you get the right coach for your situation – you're never far from winning. They got the right coach. They got the right quarterback. Their win total was two and a half. They got four wins right now. They might finish five and seven or six and six. Who knows? The Big 12's tough, and they got a gauntlet coming up. But for right now, Kansas is sitting in as good a spot as Kansas has sat in a long time, and I'm the only guy that told you it was possible. It's a good one. Bravo. Bravo, sir. Thank you. Bravo. Thank you. Thank you. I think we were all uh... – Right on where we were right. Now, I since I went last there, I'm going to go first on this one. Oh, okay. The team I was the most wrong about. And Are, buddy, we're, we're going to have the same one? I uh, Probably. I think it's probably the same one. And I was wrong on several uh, teams. Um, so was I. I was wrong on we several. Been, I was yes. wrong on several teams, but I think the one that sticks out the most are the Miami Hurricanes. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I had Tyler Van Dyke as the number three quarterback in the country. I had Miami going 10-2 and one in the ACC. Still undefeated in ACC play, by the way. Anyway, I had Miami, Miami, Miami. Just Crystal Ball coming in with a massive, massive coaching upgrade over Manny Diaz and being good, and they're just not. They're, they're not good. They lost to A&M, which is fine, but if you follow up that with a loss to Middle Tennessee State, then I'm not sure you're even interested in being here. So that's a gigantic problem. I – was very high on Miami, and I was very, very, very wrong. And I think you're going to say the same thing. Yeah, yeah, I might as well just go ahead and double down on this. I was very high on Miami. I think that when we did our most intriguing players for 2022, or whichever list it was, I had Tyler Van Dyke. Uh, You know, we said it on Saturday. The only thing I can say is what the fuck is going on. He was supposed to be the, the piece to their puzzle. He got benched against a terrible team. I I don't know how I could have been more wrong on Miami. I really don't. And I I give us credit for wanting to believe in Miami. Yeah. But why? Why did we believe Our in Miami? Our hearts were in the right place. They had the pieces. It Our looked, hearts were it in looked the right pretty we're good on people. paper. We're good people. We are good people. Don't include me in the we for that one. You're not a good person, no. No, no, no. no for we're the believing, all good people. For the Agreed. believing in Miami. Well, no, but I mean, we all are wrong about a lot of shit. We're all right about a lot of shit. Me and Casey shit. are good people. Jack and Katie are the worst. Yeah, that's yep. pretty much I, I disagree. We are all good people. We have all been right, and we've all been very wrong, and Miami would be where we were very wrong, and we wanted so badly for the you to be back. Buddy, they are not back. Jack, who were you the most wrong about? Uh, I had a belief in Virginia that was not very good. Uh, I mean, I had a belief that their defense would improve, but I did not account for the fact that their offense would fall off the biggest Mm. cliff ever. And I think that has a lot to do with the warning signs people told me about, which was their offensive line. 
and their offensive line is booty, booty, booty. Nobody's talked about Virginia, uh, their offense. They brought back nearly everybody but the offensive linemen, and their offense stinks. They went from – Brendan Armstrong went from one of the best quarterbacks in the country – To one of the worst. To a guy that can't – and also, he returned to all his wide receivers. They have NFL talent on that. Like, not first-round picks, but second, third, fourth, fifth-round picks, and they can't even complete a pass. Yeah, it's they, weird. They had a little comeback against – uh, Syracuse, but it wasn't like, oh, the offense is humming finally. Now, something that I have, and I think we see it a little bit in the NFL too, specifically with uh, the Broncos right now, and when you have a new offensive coordinator, a new system, it takes some time. Now, that being said, if it was going to take some new time, you probably wouldn't have wanted like a returning cast like you have. Yeah. They should have probably left or transferred. And then started over with someone else. I mean, yeah, that's like a, he has a PFF grade of 47 right now, which is one a, below Spencer Rattler. Imagine somebody in this office thinking that Brennan Armstrong is better than Bryce Young. Hmm. Oh no, they're thinking uh, Brennan Armstrong's receiving core was better than Ohio State's. Receiving. True. I don't. I don't know, know which one's more egregious. The the replace the Ohio State receiving core with the Virginia receiving You'd core, never and you, wouldn't, you would never notice. Is one of the most outrageously egregious things we've said we've heard in this company. But you know what fan bases say? Dumb shit. But it's Virginia. It's not like oh, it's Alabama. Like when Travier hmm. Big T talk, I'm like oh, okay, whatever. But then when fucking Malsek talks about Virginia football. Uh oh. <gasps> Yikes! <laughs> well, that one wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Katie stats. Who are you wrong about? Um, kind of circling back to most disappointing, but Boston College. I wasn't really high in Miami, so I, I don't want to put that them in my category, but I was very excited about Phil Jerkovic. I was a little nervous about the offensive line, but like Jack said, Zay Flowers had the pieces. Jeff Halfley looked great last year. Fell off a cliff. A couple that, of others I'll just mention. I was yeah. uh, I was off on Florida State. I thought Norvell would probably get fired. Um, they're, doing, they're doing great. Um, yeah, I weren't. And Nebraska, I thought they would be pretty good, too. I was wrong on yeah, that. Yeah, I was really wrong on them. Uh, I was very wrong on thinking Texas would get killed by Alabama. Yeah. Uh, but I've already owned that one for sure. Um, listen, it's September. We'll see when we do the, the Tobies. Yeah. What happens? Tobies is a lot better name, too. Than Timbies? Yeah. Yeah, but they, they, they have a good like, reoccurring theme. I would also the like Vimbies. to say I was wrong about – uh, Oklahoma State. I thought they were a lot worse. They were going to take a massive drop off, and they have not. I don't think they've played anybody to show a drop off yet, though. I know, but I think they actually been performing pretty well. Uh, but that being said, it was like I'm basing that off the Arizona State game, and that was with Arizona State's staff actively trying to get actively the coach fired. trying yeah. to get the coach fired, and sent it to they sent their they sent stuff to the opposing team about what they were going to do. Uh, I was also. I, I'm and I, Brandon, you were the same way. We talked about this a lot, but how much shit we caught for USC. I've been talking about USC being in the college football playoff vision or whatever you want to call it for the entire off season. And boy, we caught a lot of shit for that. Like, have you even been watching football? Yeah. Well, guess who's in the driver's seat in the Pac-12 right now? Guess who's ranked six in the country? You Just know, gonna put that out. You know where else you were wrong? You said you'd never get pregnant and have kids. Mm. No, I that said was, I didn't I mean, want what kids. Oh. That I, changes. People I, change. Thank you, Jack. I also said I didn't want kids. I didn't say I, that I would never. Do you want kids now? Well, yeah. Okay, good. Because you, you got know, one. You know what we need to do oh, soon? Oh, I got to tell him uh, what her name's going to be. Yep. Well, we need to do Her? The, what? We need, he? Huh? They? Huh? We what need, happened there? Okay. We need to do the gender reveal. By the way, podcast. none of us know the gender, so. Brandon knows. He wants I know to say the, it I so know the goddamn name. Oh. I actually know the gender, too. I was just trying to pretend. You, pr you know the name, too, right? No. Katie, do you know the name? Yeah. Yeah. Um, somebody just uh, messaged you on Twitter. Um, You've been talking with uh, Jason Brown, Coach Jason Brown, recently? We got to do a podcast crossover. <laughs> yeah, I got to get him in here. Yeah, just like a, maybe in the By the way, I had, to, I had to unfollow his, uh, his, his co-host. Oh, the woman? Yeah, she's, she's aggressive on Twitter. Oh, I haven't seen. I don't even know who she is. Oh, uh, she's, um, <laughs> she's, she's proud of the way she's built. And okay. She, so I know and, she's and, very and, attractive. And listen, listen, she ought to be. Okay, she no, she ought to be. She's a, woman, a stunningly yeah. beautiful uh, lady. But, I, you know, I can't be tweeting on a plane and somebody looking over my shoulder and I'm – Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 oh she's hot. Oh, Holy shit. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, she's got – Oh, my God. She's, uh, I, Can you pull her up again? I wouldn't mind. Oh, when, she when Jason awesome. Brown and Zach Smith do a crossover, man, 
Those two. It's, it's like the Jason Brown hates. Can everybody. I have a really? Yeah, he, there's no good football players All except right. for the ones that he coached at yeah. Independent. <laughs> this is a, a sports person. Yeah. yeah. Well, she does. This... I think she also does some. Hey, don't make fun of sex work. No, I'm not doing that. I'm doing like a sports talk, and then you do this. It just hey, it sex other work is real work. Is there... That's incredible. We cannot put this on YouTube because that will get. Yeah, you don't put that on YouTube. She's hot. I have like this is I only haven't even. I've only seen the only clips of her. Of yeah, I've only seen the Twitter. The Twitter pictures. I, I know. Seen. Well, I know Twitter what she. Let's anything fly. Oh, I know God. what she uh, <sighs> looks like, but I haven't been on her Twitter. I'll, I will be going to it after the show. Yeah, she's. Though. She I'm is like sliding them DMs. Hell. She's very good looking. I'm getting very, divorced very at least in the next oh, three years. Can I say something that I was wrong about too? Well, may, yeah. You may not get a divorce in three years. Well, you're not getting a divorce. Oh, I might. Oh, For yep. her? Eventually does have an OnlyFans. Oh, Brandon, she has an OnlyFans. Go. Uh, I was wrong about thinking that uh, people from Arkansas on Twitter were even remotely able to have a Twitter fight without right. being You know what, they're, what they've are what they transitioned to now? Oh, no, what? Oh, they're, 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 they didn't lose to you guys. They no. beat themselves. Yeah. And they're three oh, touchdowns mm-hmm. better than Texas A&M. Wow. Yes, they love saying that. Three touchdowns better. It's in our comments of our YouTube, too. It's if like- you were three touchdowns better, you probably would have at least won the game. But yes. you weren't three touchdowns better. Oh, to the, uh, there was a two-quarter stretch there where you couldn't move the ball. Wait, we have we done all of them? Yeah. We have done all of them, but Let's now it's the time to, if you can switch to the um, tweet. Meme of the sent. year so far. Meme of the year. You I did say the Texas A&M uh, you know, leaders. Which I think I that, think but think another one that was close, I, I changed it um, for best moment, was going to do, I think, just everything around the LSU-FSU game. Just like all of Brian Kelly's reactions, all the hype. Yeah. Just I think the internet did not know how to handle itself that day. The Yeah, the meme. I don't know. I'm so focused on Hudson right now. At, okay, at, Hudson's oh, the meme. Hudson, uh, Hudson with his boots and his goggles. He's when, now tweeting at me, which I love. By the way, I meant to tell you this. You know, Lane Kiffin told me that you're a mean person for your take on Juice. On oh, Juice the dog? Juice the dog, yes. He said. Because I say that that's said, ridiculous. That guy tweet is from mean. The, huh? He said that guy is mean. What else did he say? Nothing. That was it. Huh. But he said. I'll tell you what, I don't give a shit about. It's Lane Kiffin's dog. You don't Ooh, need to be so mean him. about a dog. D- that. I, I'm almost 90% sure that dog is not tweeting those tweets. Oh, well, no, I'm 90% I think that sure. I think th- we've talked about this already. I think that it's his You kids. think your dog or your mom's dog would like uh, <laughs> would like Juice? Yes. No, no, no. <laughs> First of all, no, no. Sam is much better a dog than Juice. No, Juice is I got cute. one for in the run that show. Uh, Lane Kiffin so. retweeted something, a video of Brandon recently. Did he? He thinks uh, yeah, Brandon's very yak. mean. It was like another clip, but it was like a hashtag come to the sip. Oh, no, it was uh, when he sent Dan and Roan uh, transfer to the sip hoodies. That's what it was. Yeah, no, but I, I think that... I love him doing that, knowing he's trying his best to get out of town. Well, <laughs> he has to, you know, I he has to say... Found, I, f- I heard he found Jesus. And he Every Ole Miss coach anymore. finds Jesus. It's crazy. <laughs> It's crazy how they know how to appeal to that fan base. Back to but to if he the has way, if he has found Jesus, good for him. By the way, Marcus yes. Freeman ha- is undefeated since finding uh, Catholicism. Look, he retweeted it today or like recently. It's someone's clip of LFG shirts. Hmm. Those are sick hoodies. They are. not really. They yes, they are. It's a red hoodie with blue letters. No, I it's mean not. just like if you're an Ole Miss fan, like you're wearing the shit out of that hoodie. You got um, any read on that game this weekend? Ole Miss, Kentucky? Yeah. Ole Miss going to beat the hell out of them. Yeah, I think so, too. I mean, they're the, going to beat the hell out of them. The, the and we're, and, and we're going to beat the hell out of them. No, the you're not. Does, Get out of here. The line makes me lean that way. Let's not go to the rough the next. Out of it, but I mean, we, 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 I, well, listen, Jackie. God bless you. Love you. But it ain't going to be pretty for what you this you weekend. Say? No, Brandon, I'm not ready to do this yet. we got to okay, do we'll this do on Thursday. Thursday. Uh, Jack, you're the, again, social media guy. What's you, What do you think the biggest meme of the year? I know what you're going to say. It's going to be A&M. But outside of A&M, who's the what biggest A&M meme? was like Iowa s- fans, transcended college football. Iowa fans with punter. The, with the no, um, cameos. Was it the memes? Iowa yeah. cameo. Was I, I really like the Stoquavius Bennett meme. Um, that's kind of funny. Uh, Speaking of, we haven't read our, our guy from Syracuse's tweets in a while. Why? Oh, he hasn't been. He hasn't been no, good. he they, tweeted one recently. I know he tweeted, but he hasn't been that good on Twitter this year. No, because he's not happy with his play. People are woke to it, I think. I, but Sean Tucker, they, they're they 4-0. Yeah, but he's he hasn't played well. So it, it's funnier when they when they stink and he's good yeah, that's to true. when he stinks and they're good. That That's not as – like Friday we won, Syracuse 22, Virginia 20. I'm pleased with the outcome of the game. We made mistakes, but we're 4-0. I'm not pleased with my performance, but I'm doing my part to help the team win. 
The grind never stops. Normal number 34. I rushed for 60 yards and five catches for 45 yards. Hashtag I mean, pleased. The the grind will never stop. Normal number 34 is very funny. Because it's like a different kind of, of first person. I, I still think that he only tweets recaps. Yeah. I still think it's funnier. If oh, the, definitely. I, I want them to lose by 20 and him to rush for 200. That's oh. what. That's the perfect storm for his tweet. 1,000%. But right. like, not even calling yourself by your name, by your jersey number, is great. By the way, I put you in college football tomorrow. What's your jersey number? 12. Oh, I'm 13. Yeah, I was 13 in basketball, but I would go I I'd be like three or seven. We are we. I'm assuming we're not. We're ignoring what the number. Yeah, you're ignoring. Now I'm a quarterback number yeah. 99. 13. Okay. I, 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 um, I mean, I would be ob- obviously, you know, 12. Roughnecks, if you give out an award to the uh, college, if you could give out an award to the college football team in September, which team would you choose? Not necessarily the best team overall, but who had the best opening month <laughs> with an outstanding gift of that. Uh, Gino Fornero says Oklahoma State. Personal Heisman going to Spencer Sanders. Revenge tour starts Saturday. Probably the dumbest thing that's ever been said on this well, podcast. He's at Oklahoma State. We like We're giving the Heisman to Spencer he's Sanders. Nice. He's been fine, but come on. Yeah. No, he's he's, he's p- been really good. MD Knight says uh, FSU. Just straight up FSU. That's what that's he says. Not, that's Didn't not see. bad. Uh, Ryan Driver says James Madison University. Huge comeback win against a team <laughs> that knocked off a top 10 team. Has done everything asked of them in their first year in D1. Has a chance to go undefeated and killed Middle Tennessee State that just killed Miami. Uh, back brother, I got three. I got to tell you, I would not be claiming A and M as a top ten team. Well, especially after this week. Well, they they were technically top ten. I lo- I do move that goalpost depending on what the argument is. They were technically a top ten team. Well, what are you right now? Time. Like. 13? 17. 17? Like, you're believe, still ranked. Right? 17? And if well, you win, yeah. if you win in Starkville, you're going to be like 12. D- I'm not. D- I'm just saying this will tell you, like, beating beating Miami is no prize now. Well, for Middle Tennessee State, it is. That's true. Well, yes, I'm saying for AM. Uh, I okay. love this one because it's uh, this guy's name is FSU Commenter, and he has a crazy take for FSU Commenter. And it's, it's literally eight tweet. lines. It's a 280. Florida State is the team of September. Why? Against all odds, they're 4-0 and with wins. How is it against all odds? They haven't beaten the fucking uh, Buffalo Bills. Not. Against all odds, they're 4-0 and with wins over LSU and Louisville. On top of that, they blew out a conference opponent the same week they received a verbal from yeah. a five-star from South <laughs> yeah, Florida. Yeah. Nobody cares about that. <laughs> That's not, awesome. Not only did they receive a, a verbal from a five-star from South Florida, they also received a verbal from a four-star linebacker from Cali that same week. <laughs> this is the fan that I, I hate. Lo- this no, is this the fan that awesome. I love. No, no, no. This. They're four and zero on the field, and he's talking about a four-star linebacker from Cali. Nobody gives a shit. You're you're succeeding on the field. Okay, talk about that. Um, he, and then he goes, Miami couldn't look like a bigger dumpster fire, and Florida has a ways to go with Napier. All things coming up FSU in September. Okay. I, I mean, they did have a great September, they and they did. are one of the best teams of so- stories so far. They did. I yeah. just love that his name is FSU Commenter. That's so great. He went so many ways against all odds to uh, we're 4 0 to Miami's we have bad. a lot of great yeah. recruits coming and, and to all our rivals suck too. Yes, and he really put a lot of thought into Honcho that. Honcho Da Vinci says, couple teams come to mind. Kansas has pulled themselves out of the cellar. Tennessee has gotten off the mat and beaten a hated rival and a top 25 opponent and have a Heisman contender after being 3-7 two years ago. Syracuse and Florida State. He gave four teams a shout. Love that. Tyler Richardson says, App State, a huge upset, an unreal Hail Mary, 40 points in a quarter and lost. And the 28-3 curse, they've had it all and it's week five. Yeah, App State really has had a whole season worth of stuff. Yeah, they've had the downs. They've had the ups. Katie feels so validated right now. She said, he, That guy said exactly what she said. Yeah. Uh, Elliot Geller. Kansas is the only answer. Leipold is a miracle worker. Not only are they 4-0, but they beat three pretty good teams and brands and have a player that should be in the top five Heisman if the season ended today. Brandon, you said that. Uh-huh. Um, Smitty oh, says, no. could make a case for Arizona. Won at San Diego State. Didn't lose to FCS North Dakota. And just won one away from cashing their win total. Didn't they just like, blow a lead? Versus California. Uh, yeah, they they weren't great against. Uh, yeah, but they Carol. were so bad last year. Oh, the, bar, the, the bar's you gotta be low. feeling better at Arizona. Yeah. I don't know if you're. I don't know if you. They didn't win the, the month. The, yeah, but right. they you gotta feel decent. Golden Lion Tamarin Sorry. says Penn State not right. They weren't ranked in the top twenty-five. Now they're eleventh. Two Power Five road wins. Nick Singleton looks like he'll run forever. And Sean Clifford showed up this year. Plus, our defense looks to be a menace again. We are. Uh, this next one is just straight up Hurricane Ian. Mm-hmm. What, what the fuck? That's well, his fucked name up. is Ian. 
So. Oh, he just put. Yeah. I get it. Yeah, but that's fucked up. Well, it's. If I mean, you, yeah, you, you rasp at anything. Uh, this is uh, also a Brandon Walker take here. I feel like everyone will say Kansas, and they should. But to be different, I'm going to go with Washington. The Huskies were bad last season. Started out of the gate bad versus Montana State, and have done a really good job thus far. Yes, Chris Casho. Minnesota Golden Gophers, undefeated, 4-0 against the spread. They played three horrible teams, took care of business, then went on the road and dominated Michigan State wire to wire. Defense is legit. Offense is back from 2019. Gophers, D.C., and O.C. need respect big time. Yeah, I heard Shout Tanner out Minnesota. Morgan's actually the offensive coordinator there. Andrew He's Wilson. So old. He does he both. Is. Not Shout only is Florida Brandon. State winning games, but they get to make fun of Miami fans. That's a good bonus. Good bonus. That is. It, I mean, if you're a Florida State fan, not only are you happy that you're undefeated right now, you are winning the state. Oh, I it's hate this, Ryan. Play like, play like a jet. Twenty-four. USC Trojans had crazy high expectations and have been magnums so far. Magnums. Magnums. Condoms. Condoms. Trojan yeah. magnums. Oh, Big dicks. Oh, Trojans. Yeah. I don't hate it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I was looking at it like, oh, I was uh, cum laude. Right. Magnums. No, that was, he's no, yeah, he's he making was a condom about, joke. He was talking about penises. By the way, I've been as told we often that do. I've been told that nobody on the planet actually needs a Magnum condom. That it's all a farce to make guys feel better about themselves. All right. So you can par- apparently put a Magnum condom literally over, like, all the way up to your elbow. No one has this. It's a fact. I agree to disagree. I mean, Elijah says, I think it has to be JMU. Their first year in the FBS and they're undefeated. They have a win against App State and Middle Tennessee. A lot of Florida states, a lot of Miami, or a lot of Florida states, a lot of Kansases, a lot of JMUs. Uh, I guess we got to get out of here. I know what Cole from Tampa is going to say. I mean, it's FSU 0 and 4 last September to 4 and 0 this September. Uh, listen, Florida State fans, you guys are great. It's been a very good season, but no, it isn't just obviously FSU. Like Kansas has been good, Washington's been good. You're not the only ones, and you're acting like you are. I mean, and also there there are the the chalky picks, like we used to eat. I mean, Georgia still got it. Like there are definitely teams. That one that you could say one that were supposed to win too. Just yeah. because they weren't supposed to win doesn't mean they won the the month. All right, let's get out of here. On Thursday, I will make Casey Smith's life a living hell as I tell her the uh, the uh, Do you have a bet yet? the hell that awaits her on Saturday. Do we have a bet. Do you have a bet yet? No, we're not going to do rules. a bet. Well, then my then you won't make my life a living hell because I I feel honestly. I said this on Saturday. I'm going to double down. You know, you, I didn't think we were going to go to the Mississippi State A&M hate week on the podcast, so it kind of caught me off guard, and I was dying. But I still am I'm going to say that if you are so confident in beating the shit out of A&M, you should make a bet. No, because I, when I make a bet on, in this company, I lose the bet. I'm not going to jinx my team. Here's the thing, Brandon, is you've technically never made the bet. I've always made. Don't the bet. go behind my back and make I'm, a bet. No, no, I'm not going to because you are my ride or die. Like, the, by the way, I know that you said that you didn't like how big you looked. The photo of us on the plane where you're sleeping in my lap is just. It's your mom was even texting me about it. It's just. I didn't even think you looked big in that. I didn't think I, so. I thought that you, was just like like you're a big guy. Yeah. Like I didn't think you looked like. No, fat. I love that photo. You are my ride or die. I would never go behind your back again like that. However, I will point out that in the past this. Brandon Witching Week mm-hmm. has always been my fault. So I'm giving you, I am telling you right now, I will give you the opportunity to get me back for what I have done to you in the past with the bet. Now, obviously, I can't drive 18 hours because we're going to be in New York, but right. I am giving you an opportunity if you would like to go behind okay. my back and talk to Dan and Let Dave. Let me name the baby. Huh? Well, no, I'm not going to do that. That's Chalupa, I mean. Chalupa Batman. 18 hours, 18 years adds up. Same That's, thing. I am th- I'm giving you permission to do what I have done to you. Let in the me past. raise the baby for a year. <laughs> no, you. What? What? You uh, wouldn't like that. Change it to a Mississippi State fan. Uh, but yeah, but but here's the thing, Brandon. What? Is that like? Well, my wife will do it. I don't. Well, raise yeah, it. like, and you, your wife seems she really good at raising. So mad at raising she does kids. enough. Oh, my for wife. You. My wife wants to adopt kids, Casey. That's I have to saying. fight my wife to keep kids out of my house. Oh, That's what I'm saying. So yeah. it's like. Well, that I don't think that's a terrible thing. I mean, granted, I, I think I need to breastfeed my baby, but my wife has breasts. Well, but I, oh, buddy, does she? Yeah, yeah. I don't think that well, they. I just, don't know, but I yeah. don't. I don't think that they just constantly make milk, though. If I had to guess. No, but she knows how. She's been. Well, there. I'm just saying between it's like now, riding a bike. Between now and Thursday. On? Now and Thursday, I just want you to ponder. I will not be angry okay, with you. Okay, I'll ponder. I'll ponder. Okay. But I'm not a sadistic also, real- bad person like you are. Realistically, you should probably have pondered before the college football show. 
Oh yeah, that's we're tomorrow. not betting. We're not doing no, the. If we do a better between it. us, I know we're I not know. letting Dan and Dave call I the know. shots. I but I am telling you that if you do choose to go to them, I cannot get mad at you because I have done that in the past. Yes. Fair enough. All right, um, that is uh, a good place to stop. Yes. We'll talk about the slate, which is a good one, coming up on uh, on Thursday. Anything else? I don't think so. That is unnecessary roughness. <laughs>